Okay, here's my introduction to Fireworking 101. Uh, first of all, I, should, I need to say I'm much better at one step at a time, linear, logical, engineering type instructions on how to do things. I suffer from a bit of stage fright, <laughs> which is silly when I'm looking into a camera, I guess. But uh, I don't do well talking about myself. So I'm just going to go ahead and wing it. Um, this is the introduction to what I'm going to call Fireworking 101. Um, in the past, working for Skylighter, when I was writing a lot of how-to projects for Skylighter.com, Harry Gillum, um, I wrote and detailed and we published a course called Turbo Pyro, which was geared toward very small devices for raw beginners in fireworking on an inexpensive basis. Um, and a lot of people got introduced to fireworking through Turbo Pyro. I hear that all the time. Unfortunately, that has gone out of print. It's not, uh, not available any longer, um, out of stock. And so that avenue for getting into the art of fireworking is not currently available. Um, so I had the idea to write, to, uh, to work on this set of projects called Fireworking 101. I want it to be a simple, logical progression of projects and, and uh, devices and components to fireworks that somebody who's interested in learning how to make fireworks can tackle um, successfully, safely, uh, and economically. Um, I'm going to focus on the three quarter inch ID tube size for things like fountains and rocket motors wheel drivers. I'm going to focus on the three inch diameter cylindrical size for rocket headings, aerial shells, mines. I stay down in that smaller to medium size range that produces a nice effect but is not so large that it's uh, difficult to tackle right off the bat. These are going to be good beginners projects. Uh, as an introduction my name is Ned Gorski if we've not met. I host fireworking.com uh, I am, uh, in 2006, I won Grandmaster at the PGI convention that year. 26 years ago, for some reason, right around 1990, um, I had uh, the hankering, I got the hankering to know how fireworks are made. What does it take to make that thing go up in the air and do what it does? I wanted to know how that was done. And that's always been the burning question now for these 26 years is how is that thing made? How is a sparkler made? How is a fireworks mine made? How is a big air, a, a ball shell made? How is a cylindrical shell made? How is a drondola made? Um, they say science begins with a burning question. The question for me has always been how are fireworks made? How do they do that? Um, this course will be geared toward that mindset, that question. Um, this is not a way to save money. You can go to your Class C store, your consumer fireworks store, and save money by, by buying your backyard display fireworks there. This is not a, well, some people do come into this hobby of fireworking uh, as a way to possibly save money. <laughs> Anybody who's been in it for a while is going to laugh at that and go, uh, you're not going to save money doing this. There's a lot of money to be burned on tooling and chemicals and and uh, components and materials and literature in fireworking. Um, so this is not a way to save money. This is a way to satisfy the question of how do they do that? One of my first and major emphases will be on safety though. Um, it's hard, you know, I'm gearing this toward my great grandsons, uh, Davey, Noah, Braden. Um, they're now three to five years old. Maybe someday they're going to want to learn how to make fireworks and they hear and they're going to hear that their papa once did that or is still doing it. I'd be a little bit hesitant to hand them this course and say here's how to make fireworks. Uh, for one reason, this is not a particularly safe, risk-free endeavor. Um, I will focus on safety as a major emphasis combined with taking the risks necessary to make something that explodes, that burns rapidly, that can hurt you, that can bite you. Um, 
but I will focus on safety and safety precautions and I'll emphasize that along the way. We're going to be work on, working with black powder compositions, uh, that black powder type compositions which are on the relatively safe, relatively low power end of the composition spectrum. Um, but believe me, if you can not make fireworks, if it's not a burning urge, if, if success at doing this isn't worth the risks that you take doing it, um, if you don't think you can do this safely, um, if you don't think you can do this somewhere where you're not going to burn the house down and risk other people's lives as well as your own health, um, there are plenty of other things you can do. If you cannot do this, don't do it. My problem is I can't not do this. It's in my blood. If it's in your blood, this may be for you. Um, so 26 years ago, I started with that burning question, called Don Rowe at Rossi Fireworks here in Cincinnati. He said, Don, I want to learn how to make, make fireworks. How do I do that? Don didn't know if I was just a kid who wanted to make cherry bombs in them 80s or whatever, a young man. Um, so he said, well, join the Pyrotechnics Guild International. There are probably a couple books out there you could uh, get a hold of. Join a local club or guild. Read the, read the past issues of the Pyrotechnics Guild International, the PGI Bulletin. Um, and get your feet wet in it and see if this is something you really want to pursue. So I did join the PGI. About then I got a hold of the first Best of AFN compilation. I started reading the Best of AFN articles in that book. Got a hold of one of Bill Lofka's first manuals, which was published in the early 90s, uh, Cut Stars the Easy Way. Learned a lot uh, reading, eventually, Bill Lofka's series of manuals. Back then, I didn't own a computer. There were no online resources to learn how to make fireworks with. I did join the, the, a couple local groups, the Ohio group and the Bluegrass Pyrotechnic Guild, um, and, and started at least being around some other people who had this same passion. Um, fortunately, nowadays, there is a lot, naturally, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, a lot of bad stuff on YouTube. Um, young kids in bare feet pounding on something on the garage floor with a steel hammer. Um, but there's also good online resources. There's a lot of good literature out there nowadays. There's uh, good websites, including fireworking.com. Um, so it's relatively easy within a year or two to make huge progress in this art, the kind of progress that used to take 10 or 20 years. Um, and so hopefully this course will be part of that that, that compilation, that group of literature, a group of resources that can help you make progress in this art safely and quickly. Um, any of this that I'm going to be talking about, even though I'm going to try to show it in a way that you can be sex successful doing it, I'm going to try to show the simple steps that are necessary to make something None of this is particularly easy. Um, I don't succeed at anything the first time I do it. Anything I'll be illustrating, I've probably done, it, just in preparation for these videos, I will do five to ten times. I will make black match five to ten times to make sure I can show how to do this easily, simply, economically, safely, and successfully. Um, don't expect immediate success with any of these projects. You may have to tackle it one or two or three times. You may have to demonstrate persistence and determination. You may have to ask questions, uh, say, in the fireworking.com forum. What's going wrong? What am I doing wrong here? I'm not getting the results I want. Practice makes, maybe not perfect, but excellent or good or successful in this as it would in any other art form baking, piano playing, any sort of music music or art um, takes practice. The old joke, the lady walking down the street of Manhattan with a cello case in her hand waves a taxi cab and asks the cabbie, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? And he says, practice, non-stop practice. Um, to get good at this, to develop a knack for it, simple hand ramming, screen mixing, making stars, making a rocket motor that works consistently every time. It takes practice and the development of a knack for it. Any mechanical skill requires a knack. Um, 
a, a feeling for it. Uh, I can sort of demonstrate it, I can talk about it, you can only develop it for yourself, that knack, when you practice it over and over and over and finally go, oh, man, this is what it's supposed to be like pulling black match successfully. One thing I'd like to add is that I will be demonstrating my personal techniques and approaches to some of this. One of my mottos in fireworking is that there's lots of ways to skin the cat and some of them work pretty darn well. Um, the way I do this may be slightly or quite radically different from the way another successful fireworker does something. Um, I'll be showing you how I do it. And like I say, I've done each of these things five or ten or even a hundred times. I have a feel for them. I've developed a knack for them. But I'm not going to tell you it's the only way to do it. I would suggest you settle in and do it one way. Either accept me as your instructor in this course and do it my way a few times and see how it works for you. So that then you can listen to how other people do it and possibly incorporate some modifications into your process. Or set my way aside and, and do it the way some other person, guy or gal, tells you they do it to see how it compares to this way. But you can get awfully confused by listening to Ned say he does it this way and Guy X says he does it this way and Gal B says she does it this way. And you can be awfully confused trying to figure out which way to do it. I'm going to set out some simple projects, simple ways to do them, inexpensively with simple tools, and, and do them successfully. I'd suggest you settle in and follow this course if you, if you choose to do so, while at the same time recognizing I'm just showing you my way to do this. I'm not telling you this is the only way to do it or even the best way to do it. It's the way I do it. I've been doing it for 26 years. I've been pretty successful doing it. It's the way I like to do it. I feel comfortable doing it. Sometimes you just have to feel whether you're comfortable doing something or not um, a certain way. So recognize that, that I'm going to show you how I do this stuff. I am going to focus on videos in this series. It seems to be the way that modern people are getting the most out of information. Reading words on a page um, takes a certain amount of imagination to imagine what the person's really trying to say and show. Um, it's Photos are even better when they're embedded in text, but I think video is even better than that. You know, I, when I, I, I was a self-employed builder for 30 years, learning how to do drywall work, if, if I could watch somebody do it, applying the drywall mud, applying the drywall tape, scraping the drywall mud off into a thin coat, letting it dry, applying more coats, sanding, I could, I could talk in text to somebody about that forever. If I show somebody how to do that, they're going to get it much more quickly. So I am going to focus on videos in this series, perhaps with some written text showing the formulas and everything that I'll be using, something you can print out and take to your shop. Um, I'm going to focus on the basics, a few basic chemicals. Um, my personal techniques for manipulating those chemicals and getting the device that I'm working on produced and working successfully. Uh, I'm going to focus on these simple basics, but one thing I need to say about fireworking is I've never played video games, but I, what I hear about video games is you start at this first simple level and then you drop down to this level if you succeed at this level, and you drop down to this level. And there are ever more complex, difficult levels as you progress down through this. I think one of the reasons many of us stick with fireworking is that there are these levels. There's a never-ending set of challenges and deeper levels of complexity to stars and aerial shells and rockets and devices and effects. Um, I'm going to hit, I'm going to stay up at this upper level. Simple, inexpensive, inexpensive tools, no heavy duty, expensive machinery, a, 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 a simple set of, of a few chemicals, a simple set of simple black powder type charcoal spark type devices. Um, and as I go, I'll sort of point in a direction for further study or for deeper understanding or experimenting with these type devices. You could go here and read this and study this and ask this and buy this. But I'm going to stay up at this, this upper level of the video game, but at the same time pointing out that man below this is a, a never-ending, more complex, more challenging, deeper, richer 
art form, and this is an art form. Uh, but you have to learn the basics. You have to learn the basic chords, the basic notes, the basic processes, techniques, devices before you can go any deeper. And hopefully in this course we'll focus on those and become successful at it. Um, so my focus in this Fireworking 101, I'm going to have a focus on safety measures. Before you do anything, observe these safety practices because you can get hurt, you can hurt property, you can hurt other people, you can get into legal trouble. Um, you have to determine what risks you're willing to take for yourself and be willing to take those risks. Don't assume nothing's going to happen to you. Oh, that'll never happen to me. It can. Um, we're messing. We're not sitting around baking chocolate chip cookies. We're making explosives here. Quote, explosives. Um, you have to know what the safety practices are. It's a good idea to get educated about the legalities federally. I'm, I'm going to be talking to people in the United States of America. Um, but you have to get, get aware of what your national, federal uh, laws are, your local and state laws, and know what you're willing to take chances doing and what is not a wise idea to take chance doing. So we're going to focus on safety measures, a set of basic chemicals, and what they do in the devices and compositions we'll be making, what are the fundamental processes and techniques such as hand ramming, such as weighing chemicals such as mixing a composition, dampening a composition. What are those simple processes and techniques? A few, an array of simple hand tools. Um, we're not going to make ball mills and rocket presses. Um, initially we're going to be using hand ramming, simple ways of pulverizing chemicals, hopefully buying chemicals already in a pulverized fine state. Um, I'll be pointing toward the sources for those chemicals and all the simple supplies we're going to be using. Um, paper, string, glue, paper tubes, uh, a few simple chemicals to make all the devices we're going to be making. Um, I will provide, be providing a detailed materials and supplies list for each section uh, as we go through the various projects and then, and then an overall this is the kit you ought to get a uh, kit of tools, hand tools, kit of supplies, kit of chemicals in order to make these projects. Um, so we'll be pointing out that detailed materials list as we go. Um, like I said, this is not going to be an expensive course, but you ought to be prepared to spend probably up to $500 in, 200, in 2016 prices. Be prepared to spend probably $500 um, in order to successfully complete this course. That sounds like a lot of money. I've gone to the Class C store plenty of times and have spent three or five or six hundred dollars on something that I'm going to take in the backyard and, and display in one evening. Um, doing this course, spending that amount of money and making that investment will teach you lessons uh, that will last a lifetime if you're really interested in, in the fireworking art. Um, in the end, all we have is smoke and memories and lessons. Um, the smoke, you'll watch you drift off. The memories and lessons hopefully will stick with you. And also, you will find a fireworking community of like-minded people, whether it's a local club, the, the PGI, fireworking.com, other online groups. You'll find a group of like-minded people that you, you'll feel like they're the best friends in the world. You finally came home and found people like yourself. So that's also a possibility. Um, like I said, we'll be working with traditional methods and materials. None of this is you got to buy this special plastic component shell casing tube in order to make this project. These are going to be simple traditional tools, simple traditional materials, um, and traditional processes that have been handed down over time um, that are very interesting to learn and recognize and, and know uh, in the long run. Um, basic processes we're going to be studying are uh, working with a formula, making sure a chemical is pulverized and fine enough to use, weighing chemicals successfully, screen mixing and dampening a composition, how to dry things successfully so that they can be used in our devices. Drying is very critically important to a lot of what we do. Hand ramming fountains and rocket motors, how to fuse something and then ignite it with fuse, how to make that fuse, ignite it with fuse, or light it electrically. Um, how do we video our devices and then analyze the video to learn even more about how our device, func our device functioned and, and what we can do to improve it next time. 
The basic devices I want to focus on are making black match and using that fuse to, in all of our projects, as essentially the only fuse we'll be using other than rammed black powder spillets, it, which will be used as a timing in aerial shells. But all the fuse could be uh, accomplished using black, the black match we will hand make. Um, black matches and quick match are getting much more difficult and to get legally nowadays, even visco fuses becoming safety fuses becoming more and re more regulated. So knowing how to make black match initially is very very important. We're going to make fountains, which are sometimes called gerbs. We're going to make our own black powder and test it to make sure that it is a f at a functional quality and power. We're going to make stars, both pump stars and cut stars, aerial fireworks mines, which shoot a spray of stars up into the sky hand rammed rocket motors, black powder rocket motors, and rocket headings, three inch cylindrical rocket headings, um, total assembly of a rocket stick motor heading into a functioning rocket that's fused and ready to go. We're going to use the, our fountains as simple wheel drivers to make a simple wheel, and then we're going to make spinning firework saxons, charcoal spark saxons, and charcoal spark turbillions. Um, I want to present all of this in as organized, building block, simple, logical, linear fashion. A series of, of projects and videos that you can tackle one step at a time and succeed at, in the initial overview and steps and devices and approach to this fireworking art. And if 15 or 20 years from now, you, Davey, you, Noah, you, Braden, you three to five year old great grandsons are watching this wondering what your papa once did uh, with all this fireworks you, you have heard about. Hopefully this can be an introduction to you into this art if you're interested in pursuing it. So uh, after, after this video we will embark on Fireworking 101.